Let's talk some U.S. markets here. The major averages closed at a record high for the quarter, but one market legend believes the rally will end badly this year. Mark Faber is the publisher and editor of the Gloom, Boom and Doom report. He joins us on the news line this morning from Thailand. Mark, always good to have you. Uh, our intro you. just now said that you see this ending badly this year. Have you put a, a timeline on, on a correction, a major correction that you see? Yes, I think I spoke on your program about a month ago. And I said either we would have a correction now and then a further rise or no correction and then a blow off like in 87. And what concerns me really is that most foreign markets have performed very badly since January. Emerging markets are down 10 percent and European markets have also grossly underperformed the U.S. So in other words, the U.S. is the only game in town. Now, each time there was only one game in town, NASDAQ 97 to 2000, then the housing market, then commodities in 2008, and then emerging markets, it ended badly. And so I'm very careful or cautious about the U.S. market, and I think we could very well first rise and then have a crash uh, from the summer onwards. Uh, I think on the last appearance as well in, uh, in early March, you said you're worried about what you just described, but you're not short, uh, at least not short U.S. equities. Is that still true? Yes, correct. I'm not short U.S. equities because uh, we have this money printing, which obviously will lead to some uh, misallocation of capital. I'd just like to remind you, uh, today or yesterday, someone published an article with a uh, with re rebuking essentially the views of stockmen saying well if the stock market makes a new high things can't be that bad the problem is that 92 percent of financial wealth is owned by five percent of the population in other words the majority of people don't own meaningful stock positions and they don't benefit from a rise in stock market but they are being hurt by rising costs of living and we all know that the real income of the median household is going down for the last few years. There's another thing I worry about. We're making new highs, but a lot of important stocks like GE, IBM, Federal Express, Yum, Intel, Merck, Oracle and the home builders are lower than in January or not much higher than last November. So we have a narrow leadership, mostly concentrated in stocks like Johnson & Johnson and Procter & Gamble. Well, in other words, uh, Mark, consumer Mark, stocks. You know, Mark, GE was about 21 in uh, November. It's 23. It's near its highs. I, I feel like you've made a number of different arguments. I want to come back to the U.S. market itself because this idea that the emerging markets are lagging, Europe obviously we know, but some would make the argument that the economic fundamentals here in the States are simply better, hence why it is uh, a place to invest right now, given the multiple, given the prospect of earnings growth. Clearly you don't believe that's the case. Well, the earnings peaked out, and here I'm citing the official figures for operating earnings by Standard & Poor's. They peaked out in the second quarter of 2012 at $25.43. In the fourth quarter of 2012, they were at $23.16. In other words, they were down 9% from the peak in the second quarter. And given the poor outlook in Europe and the slowdown in emerging economies, which has been uh, confirmed by companies like Caterpillar and McDonald's, uh, I would say that the revenues will continue to disappoint and that earnings could very well disappoint quite badly. And concerning GE, let me just point out that GE on October 15th was at $23.225. And yes, $23.18 and now we are at $23.22. Mark, so, yeah, Mark, we went down into November and then rallied. It, it, it did. You said November originally, right. In, All right. Uh, in early February. 
Mark, hey, it's Robert Frank. You mentioned the important point that, you know, you said 5% of the financial assets owned or 92% owned by the top 5%, actually closer to 80% by the top 10%. Either way, what do you think is the problem with having so much that have benefited from monetary easing in the hands of so few? And what could the ultimate problem be? We have lived with inequality for a long time. What do you think could go wrong with that rising inequality? Well, I think that uh, if you look at what happened in Cyprus, and we can debate whether it's fair or unfair, but basically people with money, they will lose part of their wealth, uh, either through expropriation or through higher taxation. You think that could happen in the U.S.? Yes. How it much could they lose? everywhere in the world, uh, in Western democracies, because you have more people that uh, vote for a living than people that work for a living. And how much could the wealthy lose in the U.S. if that happens? <laughs> well, I think you have to better be, be, be prepared to lose 20 to 30 percent. I think you're lucky if you don't lose your life. <laughs> That would be bad. There's no bailout for that, Mark. There's no bailout <laughs> to get is, you back your life. Is, yes. <laughs> Whereby, I, I mean, depending on what you believe, afterlife may be not that bad. <laughs> Mark, let's, let's hope so. Mark, always a nice uh, dose of reality.